Hello and welcome, I'm Thomas and today I will be reviewing the Audio-Technica AT2035 microphone. It was the first full-size microphone that I purchased and I've been using it ever since. I think it makes for a great starter mic and I'm going to explain why in this review right here. Yeah, this, this one. This entire review was recorded with the AT2035 at stock settings without any audio adjustments except for boosting gain in Adobe Premiere and post to get it at a normal level. It was recorded with the Go XLR Mini in Adobe Edition. I purchased this microphone and the Go XLR Mini with my own money. This is not a sponsored review. So without further ado, let's dive in. So let's Get nerdy. So what comes in the package is the AT845 plastic shock mount for a 5.8 inch threaded stand and a 5.8 inch to 3.8 inch threaded adapter. The AT2035 condenser microphone and a very nice soft protective pouch that has a zipper of all things. Whee! Normally I would have some B-roll showing you all of this along with an unboxing, but I have no idea where that box is. All I know is that it's inside of a box inside of a storage room that is also filled with a ton of boxes. Moving on to the build quality, starting off with the shock mount itself. It comes stock with a 3.8 inch mount, which means you'll have to use the included adapter to put it on a mic stand. It is completely made out of plastic. The microphone itself slides in place, which may make you concerned that it would slip out. I have no concerns about this though because it fits like a glove. What else is nice is that the cords, these little guys right here that you can barely see, are the only things that are actually touching the microphone. Then in the center of the shock mount, it is free floating, which also is quite flexible, which means mechanically transmitted noise almost never makes it into the microphone itself. It is small, compact, and made out of plastic, but it does its job well, and therefore I have no complaints. Up next is the microphone itself. It is made completely out of metal. You can see the capsule through the grills. On the front of the device, you have Audio-Technica written out, notifying you that this is the side address you speak into, and definitely not the sides or the back or the top or for some odd reason because i don't know why you don't want to speak into the bottom of this so you want to speak directly at it you know make good eye contact with it and then just love it with your voice on the back of the device things get a bit more interesting as they always do as it states the model number which is at2035 that it uses a cardioid pattern and that it is a capacitor microphone i don't know why it says capacitor back there but hey you know who knows? In case you've got that it is Audio-Technica, it also repeats that it is from Audio-Technica. On the bottom left, you have your low cut filter, which will simply drop off the base in case you are picking up any unwanted noise from your recording room. I believe that this is at 80 decibels or less. It also has a 10 dB pad, allowing you to capture a whopping 158 decibels of sound, which is crazy talk, I tell you because that type of sound I think would like almost immediately kill you or make you deaf for the rest of your life. So it's insane. Currently for this recording, I have both of those settings off. On the bottom, you have your XLR port. All in all, it's a basic looking microphone, but I think it's sexy in its own basic way. Kind of like me. <laughs> no, no, okay. It's also rather small, which means it doesn't take up a lot of space, which I can also appreciate. I do enjoy that they add a low cut, which reduces anything under 80 decibels, and a negative 10 dB pad at this price range because you usually don't see that, and that comes with more expensive microphones. So moving on to the performance, this microphone has a 26 millimeter diaphragm with a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, which means it covers the complete human hearing range. It has a relatively flat frequency response with a small boost after the 2000 hertz range which means that any sounds recorded by this guy are going to be very accurate with a slight boost to the upper range right where human vocals start, which makes it ideal for recording room sounds, instrument voices, and sound effects. It has a cardioid pattern, meaning it will pick up most of the sound from the front, half as much from the sides, and even less from the back. And same with the top and the bottom. It has a maximum SPL of 140 decibels with a dynamic range of 136 decibels. It has a maximum SPL of 140 48 decibels or 158 decibels if you put that negative 10 dB pad on it with a dynamic range of 136 decibels which is excellent it has a signal to noise ratio of 82 dB which is also excellent I like this to be above 74 decibels and it certainly is noise is rated at 12 dB SPL which is also good as I like this below 15 dB SPL the sensitivity is negative 33 dB which means it won't take a lot to boost it to a good listening level and it requires 11 to 52 volts of phantom power. Its net weight is 
103 grams, which is actually pretty light. Overall, the specs are very impressive, but how does that come across in real world scenarios? I'm going to test out the cardioid pattern right now. Right now, I'm currently talking into the front of the microphone, and now I'm talking into one of the sides of the microphone, and now I'm talking into the other side of the microphone, and now I'm talking into the back of the microphone, and now I'm talking into the top of the microphone, and now I'm talking into the bottom of the microphone because I can. Next, I'm going to test what the microphone sounds like from about six feet away. And now I'm testing this microphone at about a foot away. And now I'm testing this microphone from about three feet away. Now I am going to be typing on the Razer Huntsman Mini Clicky keyboard, which is pretty loud to see how of that is picked up by this microphone. Now I am going to shut up and just type. So. Okay, done with that. I'm now going to compare it to several other microphones so you can decide which sounds best. Let me know which one you think sounds best in the comment section below. below. Right now I'm using the built-in audio from my laptop recorded in OBS. The only edits I made were to make sure they were at the same decibel range. Currently I'm whispering. And now I'm talking in a normal voice. And now I'm yelling, I don't know what I'm yelling about, loud noises! I have been using this microphone for the entire review. How do you think it sounds? Let me know in the comment section below. Right now I'm using the built-in audio from my Logitech 4K Brio recorded in OBS. The only edits I made were to make sure they were at the same decibel range. Currently I am whispering. And now I'm talking in a normal voice. And now I'm yelling! I don't know what I'm yelling about! Loud noises! I have not been using this microphone for the entire review. How do you think it sounds? Let me know in the comment section below. Right now, I am using the Toner TC777 microphone in OBS. The only edits I made were to make sure that they were at the same decibel range. Currently, I am whispering, and now I am talking in a normal voice, and now I'm yelling! I don't know what I'm yelling about! Loud noises! I have been using this microphone for the entire review. How do you think it sounds? Let me know in the comment section below. Right now, I am using the Comica shotgun microphone in OBS. The only edits I made were to make sure that they were at the same decibel range. Currently I am whispering and now I'm talking in a normal voice and now I'm yelling. I don't know what I'm yelling about. Loud noises. I've been using this microphone for the entire review. How do you think it sounds? Let me know in the comment section below, even though there isn't an actual comment section here. So don't actually leave a comment below. Right now I'm using the StudioTech USB microphone in OBS. The only edits I made were to make sure that they were at the same decibel range. Currently I am whispering and now I'm talking in a normal voice and now I'm yelling. I don't know what I'm yelling about. Loud noises. I've been using this microphone for the entire review. How do you think it sounds? Let me know in the comment section below. Right now I am using the Audio-Technica AT2035 microphone in OBS. The only edits I made were to make sure they were at the same decibel range. Currently I am whispering and now I'm talking in a normal voice and now I'm yelling. I don't know what I'm yelling about. Loud noises. I've been using this microphone for the entire review. How do you think it sounds? Let me know in the comment section below. Right now I'm using the Comica expensive microphone in OBS. The only edits I made were to make sure they were at the same decibel range. Currently I am whispering and now I'm talking in a normal voice and now I'm yelling. I don't know what I'm yelling about. Loud noises. I've been using this microphone for the entire review. How do you think it sounds? Let me know in the comment section below. My choice is the Comica STM01, then the Audio-Technica AT2035, but honestly, they are so close that it's really hard to tell which one is actually better. So I am really seriously curious about which one you think of, especially those two, sound better. Then I would pick the StudioTac ST900, the Toner TC777, then the Logitech Brio webcam, and last, the laptop microphone. If you're interested in any of those reviews, except for the Logitech Brio and the laptop microphone, I do have those, and they will be in the description below if I actually remember to do that, which I'm gonna say that I will. So, moving on to the conclusion, look, obviously, if I thought this microphone was a piece of junk, I wouldn't have been using it for the, my videos for the past four to five years. Most of the time, because I'm a lazy bum, I've had this guy at stock settings as well, which means I could make it sound even better if I actually took the effort to do so. I love that it has a minimalistic design that makes it look simple yet elegant and that it comes in a small form factor to not get in the way. Seriously, I really like how it just kind of like disappears in my in my vision where there's some other ones kind of like this comica here that is just a little bit it's kind of giant
it's kind of giant. I also greatly appreciate that they have a low pass filter on it along with a negative 10 dB pad because it really does have its uses. I have really nothing negative to say about it. It is a perfect starting microphone and quite honestly you really don't need a better one unless you are extremely popular or doing super professional work. At which point, depending on your voice, most people jump up to the Shure SM7B, which I would love to do at some point, but I won't be doing anytime soon unless if somebody were to sponsor it, which I know isn't going to happen. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a dislike. And of course, if you've been following my content for a while, hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you know when I upload a new review. I will see you and your beautiful face on the next one. God bless and peace out. Thank you.